Tom, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Um, my name's Tom Hume, as you can see in big letters. Um, I'm design director for a company called IDEO. We started as a product design company. We're now 600 designers globally, and we help our clients solve their big challenges, often how they should grow, whether it be small startups up to governments. Tell us about your choice of images. What is this? I did physics at university, and while I was at university, I did work experience for a car manufacturer. The car manufacturer was called Marcos, and I had aspirations to be a car designer at this stage, so I thought the right way to get into that is go as a factory manager and work my way up. And I actually, after a couple of years, ended up managing director of that company. In a strange way, I found it easier to become managing director than a designer of the vehicle itself. And that's partly because I recognized that we needed to design the whole experience. And actually, it was some of the other stuff, the marketing, that was more broken than the product. And I moved it into race cars. So this is a car we designed. It was 250,000 pounds or thereabouts and very wealthy people would pay us to race it around a race circuit for a weekend and so you can see this is one of the rare times probably that it was in front of a McLaren but it was a great experience. And did you find that business skills came to you naturally because a lot of people say that designers don't make natural businessmen they come up with brilliant creative ideas and then they they give them away I heard in the last discussion saying that Philip Tracy was a brilliant hat designer but a pretty, I think, terrible businessman was the phrase that was used, but you seem to have quite quickly risen up to the management levels. I, I think a lot of it, I mean, firstly, you're as, you're as good or as bad as your competition. I think perhaps I didn't have much competition in that company, um, so common sense got me a long way, way, but fundamentally it's about common sense, and I think the tools are being accessible, so the opportunity to be creative around different stuff, like how you sell stuff, marketing, brand. I think designers can do that like never before. And what's this then? Is this a part of one of those cars? Or? Yeah, so, I, so we sold that company and the next thing I did and sort of brought together design and physics is I um, basically designed a magnetic filter that went into systems, engineering systems, and this one's in the Ferrari Formula One car. Um, we sell a lot into central heating systems as well, and it was an opportunity, it was my first opportunity to design a business, exactly what I'm talking about. So I thought of everything as a design opportunity, even because I didn't have a formal business training, I tried to figure out how to design the spreadsheet so that I could figure out how the business was running without depending on acronyms and stuff that I never would have understood. So you built a product, uh, sorry, you built a company, a business around around this, this product. product. Yes, yeah, so exactly this. We patented it um, and create. We basically applied it to all different sectors. And do you think that entrepreneur route is, is applicable to more designers? Do you think more of them should run their own businesses rather than taking their portfolios around brands and manufacturers? Is it is it Absolutely. designers should they be grasping the nettle more in that sense? Yeah, I think we have to like the. We, in the past, we were forced to cart around portfolios, etc., because the barrier to doing anything else was enormous. But now, publications like yours, you give people visibility, people that would never have had it before. They would have had to have gone through conventional channels. So I'm actually slightly, I'm always concerned when I see designers that are not prepared to put stuff out in the wild. Like, the thing that unites everyone at IDEO, I think the thing that unites designers often is a desire to have impact, to make a difference, to improve people's lives. And probably it's easier to do that by releasing things into the wild than just talking about it. Tell us about this then. Yeah, so this, I um, sold this to the previous company and joined IDEO and I lucked out big style. One of the first projects that I worked on was um, for a company, Javianas. Do any of you know Javianas? Flip-flops. Flip -flops. Brazilian flip-flops. Amazing flip -flops. business. So they, they came up with the idea of the flip-flop in the 1960s, and now they, they literally make a pair a second. The volumes are unbelievable. But they're a single product company, and it was really interesting to think through the challenge for them of how, how to get them to do something else. How would we give them permission to create something else? What could we do with their brand that perhaps is more than just a flip-flop. And we did that project and designed a range of bags which are available now, but it was my first opportunity to do proper design research. Everything else I think I'd kind of been designing for myself because I felt the need. This was an opportunity to 
actually get out there again in the open, understand what the real needs were. And this is one of the bags we designed where you could obviously have Iana's huge application for the beach and showing that you have a sort of relaxed attitude to life. So this um, bag that you can see here, we designed so that you could sort of insert a wet towel without getting everything um, messed up. It was a great fun one. So did they come to you and say, look, we need to have more to our company than just flip-flops or did you it's, approach them or how did it happen? exactly what happened. And so we started, the first thing we did was research. We looked at two markets, Brazil and interestingly Australia, which is their second best market. Um, and we looked at how people thought, what they thought of the brand, where it could go. And it seemed that bags were the sort of logical next extension. And have it, I think flip-flops are a wonderful exam, example of the fact that sort of form is function. And we tried to do that with bags for them. So up to now you've shown products, but what's this? This is the, uh, one of the primary focuses of my life at the moment, apart from my wife is here, I should say that. Um, the, this is open IDEO. So I, as you can tell, I'm really passionate about this idea of democratizing design, about giving everyone access. And so I challenged myself to come up with a way of doing that online so that everyone can work through the design process. I got a great team from IDEO to work on it with me. And we created a platform where we run through design challenges. For designers, this will be familiar. We have inspiration, then we come up with ideas, and then we evaluate them. We launched a challenge initially with Jamie Oliver, which you can see here, to come up with ways to help reduce childhood obesity. You can see the challenge at the top. And now a community of 37,000 people from 160 countries work together to solve challenges for social good. It's really sort of democratized the creative process and everyone's contribution is valued. So even if you just drop on and applaud stuff, we see that as an important part of collaboration. So this is the thing that people here could go home tonight and go on to Open Ideo and, and contribute. Be yeah, part I, of it. I, and we would absolutely love that. It's really important. I think it's kind of important. There's value in the destination, in the ideas that it comes up with but there's just as much value in the sort of journey and the engagement around topics. So we have a challenge um, up there at the moment about how to help the youth of today, it's sort of a current topic, be more employable, how to help them transition into the world of work. So it's been good fun watching it. And what? fascinatingly as well, people are now using this as a badge of honor in mm. communities. They're applying to jobs, showing what they've done on this platform, because there's not many places they can demonstrate their creativity. Why would a big company, a big international design company like IDEO back something like this? Is, is it a kind of, is it philanthropy? Does it make them look good or is there a business logic to it? Or is all of those, all of those things? All of the above. I mean, I think firstly, we first and foremost, it's positive impact. We're starting to get stories about the good stuff that happens as a result of this. Secondly, we learn. We're curious people and we want to sort of you know, we want to understand this new medium, the idea of mass collaboration, which has never happened before. The fact that, you know, Wikipedia has 100,000 regular contributors that have contributed 23 million articles. What does that mean? How can we create our own little Petri dish like that? And then thirdly, as with all of this stuff, I think when you create something of value, opportunities emerge. And the interesting one for us with this is big companies have started coming to us saying, actually, why don't we do that with all of our staff? I think what's really fascinating talking to you is you're, you're clearly an entrepreneur. You've clearly done well in a business sense at a young age, but a lot of entrepreneurs, they seem to be obsessed about the money and then maybe they retire and then they launch a foundation, but you seem to be doing the two things simultaneously. And do you think that's because of your design background? Do you think designers are a uniquely placed to care more about the environment and the developing world and things like that? Or? I think it's maybe Do that's they make true. better capitalists, I guess is what I'm I saying. I, I would hope so, but I think the, I think all of us, when we act as customers and consumers, are gonna start demanding that stuff. So I actually think it's a market pull and you know, the, the probably the most important thing which I thought about including an image of, but I didn't want to bore everyone even more than I currently am. I spent a year in Africa before going to university and it was pretty formative for me and I sort of resolved at that point to try and come up with business, hybrid business models where I could feel comfortable about some positive impact above and beyond just cash. Brilliant. Well, Tom, it's been fascinating talking to you. We could have talked for a, a lot longer, but we've got to move on, especially as we're a bit behind the schedule. No worries. Tom, thanks Thank very much. You.